Thank, thank you, uh, Chairman Miller. Appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here with you today. Uh, and uh, thank you to uh, the minority chair also and the, and the committee members uh, for allowing me to testify on this very important issue today. Mr. Chairman, right to work is a basic issue of individual liberty. Regardless of occupation, hardworking taxpayers should never be forced to pay union dues in exchange for the right to work. In virtually every public opinion poll conducted in the last 20 years, no less than 70% of all Pennsylvanians favor enactment of a right to work law. The framers of our Constitution never intended for our government to become an enforcer for unions or a collection agency of forced union dues at taxpayer expense. Pennsylvania without a right to work law encourages coercive union practices in both the public and private sectors. Under my right to work legislation, House Bill 50, the Freedom of Employment Act, and the rest of the Pennsylvania Open Workforce Initiative, House Bills 51 through 53, employment would no longer be conditional upon membership or non-membership in a union, nor upon payment or non-payment of money to a labor organization. Mr. Chairman, by forcing an employee to pay any fee to a union, whether it's full dues or partial dues, and whether it includes membership rights or it doesn't, that is in itself creating forced unionism by default. Without this right to work legislation, Pennsylvanians working citizens will continue to be deprived of their individual right to decide which private organizations they will join or support, and our entire economy suffers. Forced unionism states such as Pennsylvania experience lost individual freedom, lost income, lost jobs, lost population, and increasing welfare roles. America's 22 right to work states consistently lead the nation in all aspects of real economic growth and overall quality of life with higher net job gains, higher net jobs gained, lower taxation, more people with private or employment based health insurance, and fewer individuals dependent on state welfare. In fact, nine of, the ten, nine of the top 10 chief executive magazines, 2010 best states to do business have a right to work law, Mr. Chairman. Currently, Pennsylvania ranks 39th out of 50 states in overall economic competitiveness, third highest on the list of outbound job states, and has suffered stagnant population growth since 2000 that has resulted in the loss of three congressional seats through redistricting. According to the Department of Commerce and Bureau of Labor Statistics, between 99 and 2009, right to work states have experienced 28.3% growth in real personal income as opposed to only 14.7% in forced unionism states. The U.S. Administration of Children and Families and the Bureau of the Census reported for 2009 that the number of welfare recipients per 1,000 residents was 17.3% in forced unionism states, such as Pennsylvania, compared to only 7.6 in right-to-work states. The Bureau of the Census further reported that the percentage growth in number of people covered by private or employment-based health insurance increased by 0.9% in right-to-work states. Not a huge increase, but it's still increased. In forced unionism states, it decreased by 6.9%. According to U.S. Labor Department data between 2003 and 2005, private sector job growth in forced unionism states increased by only 2.3 percent, while private sector job growth in right-to-work states increased by 4.9 percent, or roughly 120 percent more. The lack of a right-to-work law in Pennsylvania also, without question, increases political corruption. Since the passage of Pennsylvanians Pennsylvania's agency shop law in 1988, nearly 20,000 non-union state employees have lost their individual freedom to decide whether or not to join or support a union. As a result, millions of dollars are collected annually by the state from non-union members in the form of compulsory union fees and sent directly to the coffers of state employee unions, such as AFSCME, all at taxpayers' expense. According to the Pennsylvania Department of State, AFSCME Council 13 spent approximately $863,310.79 during the 2010 election cycle. Not surprisingly, 94% of that total went to support Democratic candidates and Democratic political action committees, providing the unfair bargaining power necessary to drive state government employee salaries and benefits higher and higher. Since 2004, state government employee salaries have risen from a median average of $39,037 to $45,105. In comparison, the median average earnings for Pennsylvania's private sector employees stands at $32,239. As cited by Governor Tom Corbett during his 2011-12 state budget address, Quote, since the recession began, the state's union employees have seen annual increases. The private sector, the taxpayer, has seen its average income stagnate, unquote. Passage of the Pennsylvania Open Workforce Initiative would place the power back 
into the hands of the employees who would be able to hold their union and their employer accountable by either choosing to join or leave a union at any time. Best of all, the total taxpayer cost of restoring the fundamental right to work, whereby all Pennsylvania working citizens will never again have to fear losing their jobs or not being able to support their families due to compulsory unionism, is absolutely zero. The facts could not be clearer. Realizing the exclusive individual and financial liberties associated with becoming America's 23rd right to work state, enacting the Pennsylvania Open Workforce Initiative is the true economic stimulus plan leading to unprecedented growth and real job creation. It's a zero cost initiative that makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.